Hello, everybody. It's OCD Mikey here, your famous host, and what? Uh, I was going to say Mater D, but that's not right. Um, what is it? Uh, that's the. Uh, what's the guy called? The guy, the MC? MC in the house? Um, the guy that is the master of ceremonies. Oh, yeah, that is MC. Okay, so, well, anyways. Never mind. Um, now we're going to do something kind of a little wacky um, and just try it out. Right down here, we've got Playback Designs Streamer IF, Stream IF. This is a streamer. You just plug the inter you plug the Ethernet into there, and then you come out of there via um, glass fiber up to the DAC. It has its proprietary connection there, so no RF can get on to the line. Um, and um, But, uh, but I, re I realized that this is just a box. It's like a, just an open box in there, and I know it doesn't have any um, RF treatment inside the box to prevent the propagation of waves inside that box. So I'm going to put some foam in there and in, inside the lid and on, on the inner walls. And then I'm going to look at the chips down on the board and see if we maybe put a little RF treatment down there. Now I'm very, very hesitant. Well, I mean, I'm, I've decided I'm going to do it now, but I'll be very, very careful. Andreas, uh, who designed these Andreas Coke, his, uh, um, his DAC up here, which is my favorite DAC so far, which is the Playback Designs um, MPD-8. Um, it's the only DAC that I've had in here. I've had it, hmm, let's see, almost maybe a year. Um, and I've never opened it up, which is like a complete, that's a record for me. I open everything up because I want to see what the circuit looks like. How, how did this guy design the circuit? How is it laid out? What is, what are they doing in here? You know, and, uh, but not with Andreas's piece. For some reason, it's like, I just... I don't want to go in there, man. It's like the Holy Grail. I dare not open it up. Or I might open a whole Pandora's box of ghosts from the Lost Ark or something. But, um, no, for real, I have not gone in there. That's really surprising that, I mean, normally, like, everything... Look, you know, Rachna open. Um, look, no, these, that one, the, you know, Marchand open. Uh, Nat Audio open. I open everything. I want to look in there and see what's up. It's also to inspect and make sure that there's no... You know, if I take a trade or something, I want to inspect and make sure the thing is all in good shape and there's no burnt boards or anything that looks weird. So I inspect them, you know, um, but not the playback. Eventually, one day, I will probably take the playback open just to look in there and see what's up because I could apply some simple things just like the RF foam that, that stops propagation of waves. Um, the, the DAC is so, it, it does everything right that I'm, I'm, I'm like, I wouldn't want to upset that, you know, by opening the DAC. But um, if they're not doing any, if, if there's something that I think might be weird in the sound, then I the first thing I do is open it up and, and look around. So um, needless to say, everything else gets opened up. Um, I am going to take the streamer now. We're going to go into the shop and I'm going to put some stuff in it. We're going to listen to some songs now. I don't have two streamers, so I can compare A to B. But what we can do is do a before and after. So here we're going to take a couple of recordings of the before um, music. And then we'll do the after uh, once we get out. So here we go. Oh, by the way, never mind these. Okay, these are out here because we're doing some experiments later. Um, so they're just sitting out here. So these aren't playing. Those, those aren't playing. We're listening to these right here, these seven foot tall planar magnetic speakers. That's what we're listening to. And then subwoofers are Back here, you can only see, you can see the top of that sub tower, top of that sub tower. So they're kind of firing right into these guys. Yeah, so it's not the best, but I think we're we're we're, we're gonna, you know, I mean, hey, this is R and D land right now. It's this is a, this is the test, this is the test pod. So here we go. I 
Okay, so I never knew that music until right now. Um, why did I choose it? Because it sounds like it could use some improvement. <laughs> it's just kind of a little, eh, it's not the best, I don't think, recording. Um, so we'll be able to pick up if it gets any better, I think. Easy on that one. Because it's kind of a little bit, um, vocal's kind of thin. Um, uh, the um, There's kind of a little hollowed out point in the middle of the, where the mid um, there's a couple things in their cues that I'm looking for. So I did that one on purpose because it's a little off. It's not because how good it is. It's because it's, it needs improvement, I feel. And after we do this mod, let's see if it improved. That's really why I chose that one. So let's see what else we got here. Okay, I'm going to have you hold on. Okay, and here is the second piece. So I'm going to go modify that piece and I'll be back. I'll see you in a couple hours. And to you guys, it's going to seem like two seconds. See you. I'll be back. Okay. So here uh, is the playback designs the streamer and um, got the box open. And then I put these on the top so you can see their foam. They are probably loaded with carbon black or something like that. Basically just absorbs any sort of waves that are in here. So there were no no waves will propagate with that up on the ceiling. Or the roof line, the whatever, the lid, the top. Um, and then if we look over here, it's kind of interesting. Here is the streamer. So you can see, whoops, this is all really that's in a streamer. We've got here, this is the FG, FPGA. We've got a little clock on the right-hand side up there, off to the right. Um... So, yeah, this is on a mezzanine board. Um, is it an X Linux? Yep, okay, that's FPGA for sure. Um, these are voltage regulators, those linear things, two voltage regulators. These are the outputs, those are the uh, glass optical right there, those two plastic ones. USB, um, coax, that's an Ethernet, and then the power in. So, I'll probably put something around the power in on that cap, maybe. Um, these are also power places, so I'll put the, some on top of the cap there for this, um, material. And then, um, I think that's all I'm going to do. I don't think I'll put any on the chips yet, at least not right now. And that's it. So this, uh, thing right here is 4,000 bucks <laughs> inside that case, which is, I'm not going to say, I'll let you guys, that's, that's 4,000 bucks or 3,500 for this thing in the case and then let's see where's this other thing okay and then this over here this is like two hundred dollars in the case and it's a full computer I think does way more than that other board does but the other board's very specialized in its high-end audio so okay i'll be back see you okay so that right there that see that up on the mezzanine that uh board there that's the arm so that's how this thing is run. It's an ARM. This is a Raspberry Pi is what an ARM is. Um, essentially, a Raspberry Pi is a type of ARM. Um, this is like a computer CPU, essentially, the brain of this thing. Um, 
and they're very inexpensive. That thing's 10 bucks, something like that, maybe 15. Um, and it does a lot of work. It's very smart. Uh, you can program it to do a bunch of stuff. Um, so as we look at this, we can kind of things start to sort of take place, you know, FPGA, ARM, which controls it, two voltage regulators. Um, and I don't know what these pieces are. Um, but I can find out. Usually what I do is I'll come in and if I'm interested in finding out, I'll get all these numbers and I'll run them in Google and find out what the parts are and read about them and see what they're doing. And then I can determine what's going on on the circuit. So, uh, that's it. I'll be back. See okay. And I am back uh, now I'm taking the stream IF and, uh, you saw the things that I put inside in the, in the lid there. And I also put some, um, um, EMI treatment, um, absorber on top of the cap, the capacitors inside there, the, um, the electrolytic caps. Um, most of them are all just power supply related. I did not put any on the logic chips or anything like that. I left those alone. Um, and so let's see if we can, if we get any sort of a, a, dif a difference out of this, any sort of a change, it will be unique if we do, because as I told you, the, it's light that goes up to here. It's not electrical signal. I mean, it's in the form of light. It's not on a metal wire. So theoretically, whatever noise happens here would never get transmitted up there because it's um, it's light and you can't ride noise on a light beam. You know, you need metal or what have you. So, um, so let's see if it makes a difference. I'm going to be kind of surprised. It'll be cool. Um, and um, and uh, but if it if it doesn't, then I won't. I kind of won't be surprised because of that transfer we also do have a coax though on the back of that thing we could hook it up via coax see how that sounds too just for comparison so I think it sounded better from what I remember. Um, we'll have to listen again, but that that is definitely a crappy recording. <laughs> um, so let's go to the next one and see. That one I couldn't really tell a difference, but um, just because it was a better recording, you know, I don't know. I don't think I don't know. Anyways, we'll uh, we'll go back and listen to these two and then determine if anything happened. But it'll be pretty cool if it did. So you can check that out. So okay, let's say we get improvement here, right? Okay, and we tried this in another piece uh, that one thousand dollar DAC as well. Um, if we went through the whole rig and we did every piece, cleaning up the little RF in every single piece. 
Um, and then we went and like went to every piece and did a extra ground wire, like one that just came off the back of the unit and went to a special grounding um, area um, on the back wall or, or on the front wall or in a box of some sort. And we, we could really bring a lot out of what we have here. And I think you guys would be really surprised if you knew how much of the Sonic gets lost to these little elements, just like grounding and AC power and, um, you know, DC power. We're just cleaning up power on this thing. When I put it in the, you know, I'm putting it on the power supply caps because I'm figuring, you know, if, if noise isn't coming in off the, you know, the, um, the signal that's light, it, it, then it could come in off on, on the, on the power, um, feed, 12 volt power feed. So that's where I, I put the, the little um, RF absorbers. And, uh, so um, you can see if we did that across the board, we put grounds across the board on every piece, you know, to give them extra grounding. Um, I think there'd be a huge difference. There would be a huge difference. I know it. And and you'd be surprised if you take some cheap ass components. Some of you, some of y'all that maybe have a, don't have a, a, a highfalutin stereo rig. Just try it, man. Try it with your, with your cheap stuff and, and see how much you can bring back. Um, even though you have cheap stuff, man, you can go in there and do a couple things you don't even have to necessarily go inside, but just do, um, you could ground it, you know, that would be easy from the outside. Uh, and you could, uh, to damp vibrations is a good thing too. But anyways, we're learning all these little things. You put these in conjunction with the big things, and then you've got something that you won't recognize as an audio system. It'll be more like a transport mechanism, like a time warp thing. Seriously, it takes you places. It feels like it. So that's when it becomes really fun, when, when, you, when you don't even really realize you're listening to a, a, an, an audio system. Um, anyways, so that's that. Kind of a little fun thing to check out, and um, I'll be checking in with you later. See you.